Hi, I'm Edward O for TFB TV. I'm a Canadian-based writer and shooter with a keen interest in imported military rifles. And we do see a decent number of those here that you wouldn't normally find in the United States. Since this is my first video, I thought we'd start off with something a little bit fun. I've got two rifles out here today. This is a Swiss Arms SG550. And then we've also got a Fame SG540. So these two rifles share some interesting history together. I wanted to have a bit of fun with these rifles, so we've taken them out into the backcountry. We're right at the base of the Rocky Mountains, essentially, and I've set up a strictly fun shoot. So the SG540 was originally designed by Swiss Arms, but not to compete in any of their military trials. It was built primarily as a commercial and export item. Um, and sure enough, it saw a limited adoption with the French military in the 80s. And then we saw some buyers actually buying the license to build the rifles themselves. So this is a Chilean SG540 made by Fame. The original run of SG540s was done in 1977, and we had three major variants. We had the SG540, which was our 556 rifle, and then we had the 543, that was a short carbine, and then we had the 542, which was the 308 or 762 NATO. And all those rifles were produced under license in France. So in 1984, the 540 is redesigned by Swiss Arms, and we get the 550 to replace it. When the Swiss military did start looking for a replacement rifle, they took the core design of the SG540 and started updating it. So both of these are piston-operated rotating bolt systems, very, very similar receivers, but we do see a jump up in terms of the stamping and welding quality on the Swiss version. Both rifles use self-retaining takedown pins, ambidextrous safety, very similar magazine release, bolt release, etc. Our windage adjustment is on the rear, our elevation is up front, um, we've got a standard sight, and then we've actually got a second folding tritium sight that drops in. And then we've got diopter sights for two, three, and 400. That 400 yard peep sight can actually be traded out. Now remember this is 1980s design, so we're not using any Picatinny rail, we're not using any QD slots, but we do have three distinct sling mounting points built into the rifle. And we do have an optics mounting option for both these rifles. It's kind of an interesting setup. The idea is you have almost a dovetail that self-expands into the top area of the receiver. We do run into a bit of a problem when we start to put optics on top of this, though, because from the factory, the iron sights are very, very low at their height over bore. So our cheek rest is also really low. When we add optics into the equation, we really have to start looking for some kind of a cheek riser. Uh, hence the Galil and cheek riser option on the Fame. One of the things I really like about the Swiss Arms is there's a bunch of little features that make it really clear where it came from. Um, one of my favorites is the fact that the trigger guard can be folded to the side to expose your trigger. And that might seem really silly, but if you're in a high altitude, cold weather environment where you don't just, you know, want gloves, you need heavy gloves, suddenly you can still operate the rifle. Now, if you're an American shooter, you might look at one of these and say, why would anybody spend $4,000 on something when I can buy a perfectly good AR-15? One of the reasons for that is that in Canada, all AR-15s, regardless of barrel length, are treated like handguns. So I can't take one out here to shoot. I can only take it to an approved firing range. The Swiss Arms and the Fame are non-restricted, so I don't have to register them with the federal government, and I can take them out hunting if I want to. In fact, one of my favorite photos of all time, it's very, very Canadian. Um, there's a gentleman up in the Arctic Circle uh, hunting seals with his classic green. Of course, in Canada, we also see the smaller versions. We do get the occasional uh, Swiss Arms Carbine and the Swiss Arms Commando, um, but those are restricted, so they're in the same kind of place as ARs. Less popular, for sure. So this SG540 looks a little bit different than your factory standard. Those normally look like this, and that would be the original military configuration out of Chile. This here has a bunch of Canadian aftermarket accessories. So notably the full quad forend, and then a folding Galil style stock. And this has a cheek riser on it, which is really important because we've also got an optics mount in there. And then you'll notice underneath, we've got a Stanag magazine. So this has a magwell block inside it that allows it to use an AR-15 mag. 
The fumets and the aftermarket accessories in this all come from ERE Systems. They're a Canadian company and they've got a relationship in Chile. They're also designing stuff like the quad rail handguard up front and the folding stock in the back. The fumet does get to be pretty heavy. By the time we put everything on it, we're looking at 11 pounds here. So it's definitely not a light gun anymore. I will say I love having a real bipod on there. The Swiss Arms integrated bipod is a great idea and probably not bad on a flat surface, but I found it a little bit frustrating to use. So because the Swiss Arms is made in Switzerland, uh, it's incredibly expensive. It's, they were going for 3,500 when I first started looking. I believe current value is just over 4,000 Canadian for one of those rifles. Um, in comparison, a FME SG540 can be bought stock for about $2,500. But we're looking at easily another $1,000 in parts currently sitting on this FME. Now, some people might say, why would you bother using Stanag magazines when you've got perfectly good, perfectly serviceable, uh, dedicated magazines for the manufacturer? But this is a little bit of a Canadian thing. So bear with me for a moment as we go through some real rough Canadian law. Semi-automatic rifles, their magazines are limited to five rounds. Semi-automatic pistols, their magazines are limited to 10 rounds. But it's the magazine itself that's controlled. So I can take a 10 round magazine from an AR-15 pistol that's very popular in the United States and put it into my regular rifle and get a full 10 rounds out of it. Along the same line, I can take a magazine that's designed for a 50 Beowulf cartridge, load it up with 223 and take it places. It's also totally changed the competition landscape in Canada because now you've got somebody with a $4,000 Swiss Arms rifle who's not competitive against a guy with a $600 AR-15 who's got almost three times the magazine capacity. The other big jump that we don't see between these two rifles, because these are both civilian semi-automatic rifles, is that the Swiss uh, military version of the SG-550 adopted a single shot, safe, three shot burst, and full auto. Whereas the original 540, you had to swap your trigger packs to pick between a three shot burst and a full auto. You can see we've also got an interesting flash hider on both of these. They're using a very birdcage style. Original FMAs were pinned and welded flash hiders, but these new versions are a threaded barrel. They do have an adjustable gas system. The 550 is pretty much just a uh, regular shooting or fouled shooting. The SG540, though, has a setting for rifle grenades, fouled, unfouled, and I believe another completely off. I find it really interesting that the SG550 hasn't replaced the SG540, and that there's still aftermarket support for both platforms. They're fantastic rifles, and a really unique option in a country that prohibited most of the Cold War classics. I want to thank Griffin Energetics for providing the binary targets that you saw explode in this video, Ammo Supply for the smoke grenades that I used as a timer, and ERE Systems for loaning me their gear. But most of all, I want to thank you, the viewers, for taking the time to watch. If you're interested in seeing my other guns, reviews, and Canadian content, my personal YouTube page is TV-PressPass, and I use the TV-PressPass name all over the web.